Hey, what's up guys? Another knife review. This one is going to be for all you Balasong lovers out there. Um, this is a full-blown custom Balasong. Um, this is made by a gentleman named uh, Armand Palicio. And um, he does amazing work. Uh, he does a lot of uh, Filipino uh, style, like traditional style Balasongs. Uh, with the, uh, of course, traditional materials such as a lot of brass. You see a lot of animal bone. Uh, buffalo horn, things of that nature. Uh, but this one is kind of a mix between traditional and modern. Obviously, you can see it has a very modern look to it. It does have modern conveniences, such as the uh, pivot screws instead of pins, which are on all the traditional uh, Filipino handmade battle songs. But um, it's just his interpretation of, like I said, a modern day uh, battle song knife or butterfly knife, whatever term you prefer. Uh, it is an actual beautiful beautiful piece um, I mean it, a lot of people see the Benchmade Model 42 as being a staple in the Balasong community and I still to this day believe that that is the one of the nicest if not the nicest production Balasong but um, there's a whole world out there past production and when you're talking about custom knives I mean I haven't really even gotten to the tip of the iceberg as far as customs on my channel or showing them or talking about them it's a whole different world it's a whole different class, and they're totally by themselves. You can't really compare them. Uh, I do think this blows away a Benjamin Model 42 in a lot of different respects. Um, attention to detail, uniqueness. It is a full-blown custom knife. You can't, you can't compare customs to production knives. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful knife. I want to give you some specs on it um, because it is a, um, uh, a Filipino handmade knife. The original specs were in centimeters, so I'll give you those, you know, as per uh, the theme of the video. But I'll also give you inches as well. Uh, the blade, you know, I didn't even open it for you guys yet. Uh, first off, it has a T latch. You know, traditional. That's where the traditional stays in. There's no spring latch or anything. It's a T latch, but it is uh, spot on. The tolerances are perfect on this. Where when it's closed, it does not want to go anywhere. Okay, but once open, even in the open position. Let me give you a full view of this after I close it. In the open position, it uh, locks very nicely, and it holds strong. But anyway, here's a... Well, let me move those out of the way for a second here. Here's a full-blown look at the knife. And there will be a lot of reflection and stuff. This is an all-polished knife, so... I apologize in advance for any kind of fingerprints or reflecting from the light and all that kind of stuff. But uh, There's two different styles uh, with this specific model. This is the P1 which has more of a Weehawk style blade. Uh, the P2 is more of an upswept uh, clip point style. But here's an up close of the blade itself. Now you can see uh, Pandian on the blade there marked. I believe he's going to be changing the name of these models. This is, uh, like I said, one of the older models they have. There is a brand new model there as well, but I'm not familiar with it, nor am I reviewing it right now. But anyway, beautiful, beautiful knife. Here's the back side. Again, all hand done. The grind lines on this are spot on. I mean, it looks like it could have came off an assembly line, although it was completely handmade. Um, I do really, really like the adjustable pivots here. That is huge for me. A lot of the Filipino ones uh, models are very nice, but I just, you know, the pins, once you start using them, collecting them is one thing, but when you actually use the knife and they start getting loose over time, you want to be able to adjust them. So this is a huge selling point for me, is having those uh, adjustable pivots. Uh, this is stainless steel. The body here is uh, uh, a 303 series stainless steel, and it is uh, a solid billet which is milled out. Okay, it's not a sandwich style. You can see the channel that was milled out of here. So extremely sturdy. Um, it's a very uh, high polish on this. Like I said, it's kind of a mirror polish. You can probably see the camera and stuff in the background if I get a solid. There we go. On the blade, you can see my face. But anyway. Just uh, really nice attention to detail. Um, new age look with the uh, the milling on the handle here. Now, of course, you see this mostly on the Benchmade with the larger holes and then the sets of little holes. But I don't know if Benchmade was the first company to actually do that. I've seen many, many models with that on there. So I wouldn't say necessarily it's a copy of the design or anything like that because the design goes way back before Benchmade started making battle songs. They just happen to be known for that type of design. Um, as you can see here, there are two uh, tank pins to keep the pressure uh, in open or closed position. 
You see the second one here? And that's uh, how that works. That's why those pins are on here. They keep the tension in between the handles so that you have the right amount of tension for the lock to stay closed. And of course, again, in the closed position, you can see here's the other pin. They go right into those little notches. And then it keeps the, uh, the space in between the handles so that it will lock. Absolutely beautiful. Just, I, I really can't begin to tell you how nice this is. Uh, it being all stainless steel and being a little bit larger, it is a little bit heavier. Uh, it's 8.12 ounces. To give you a comparison, if you guys are familiar with the Benchmade Model 42, the 42, I believe offhand, I believe it's 4.1. So it's literally twice as heavy. And it's a solid piece. When you have it in your hand, you know you have it in your hand. And uh, there's no mistaking it for anything else. Uh, very, very solid. Very nice construction. Um, like I said, when you get into the realm of customs, it's a whole new ball game. You really can't compare it. Uh, as far as price, um, right now these are $295. A lot of people are going to go, oh my god, again, Jeff, what's the deal? It's too expensive. Well, when you're talking about custom knives, and specifically battle songs, uh, most custom battle songs out there start at around $400, and they go up from there. Um, if you want to see some examples of some custom knives or some high-end production battle songs, uh, check out edcknives.com. They offer, they usually offer a lot of different custom battle songs. So when you go over there and you start Googling around and looking at different things, you're going to go, you know what? $295 is, is darn cheap for a custom valley. Um, but again, it's, it's hard to compare to anything else. I mean, a lot of you guys out there are going to be used to production prices. So it's going to seem steep, but in reality, it's actually extremely low for what it is. So I think it's a, it's a great deal if you're in the market for a custom battle song. Um, the, the, Individual who makes this takes custom orders. You can make, you know, pretty much give him any idea you want and he'll make it. Uh, price, of course, will vary for that. Uh, he makes battle song swords. He makes miniature battle songs that are like, you know, yay big. I mean, they're actually really cool. They're literally like that size. So awesome if you're like in California and you want to carry them around. You can get one with the California legal blade and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, this for me is not a flipper. This is for the uh, collection. That's its sole purpose, is just being a collectible. Uh, I do flip it occasionally, but I don't try to scratch it up or anything. Oh, I didn't even give you the rest of the specs here. Let me lay this out so you guys can see it, and I'll... Let me give you a good view on this. Give you some more specs on it. Anyway, uh, the blade is 10.5 centimeters, which is roughly over 4 inches. You know, it's like 4.1 inches. Uh, it's 1095 stainless, or excuse me, 1095 carbon steel. So uh, with that high polish on there, if you want to make this uh, stay nice and shiny as it is and polished, you do have to oil it and you do have to take care of it. Uh, since I've had this knife, I've wiped the blade down numerous times. In fact, after this review, I'll wipe the whole thing down because I don't want my fingerprints rusting anything. Uh, that blade will definitely deteriorate and start rusting or tarnishing if you don't take care of it. Um, again, pretty unique. There's not a whole lot of battle songs out there with 1095. I mean, most of your production battle songs will definitely have a stainless steel of sorts. With the only real exception is the, the Morphos. Sometimes you'll see D2 on some production valleys, but for the most part, people stick with stainless. So it, it does stay with the traditional part of the bow songs from the Philippines being that carbon steel. So again, you have a just over four inch 1095 uh, blade. Uh, the handle is 13 centimeters, which is uh, 5.1 inches roughly, give or take. And uh, the overall is 24 centimeters, making it about 9 inches or so. And again, like I said, the weight is pretty heavy at 8.12 ounces. So, uh, it, you know, it flips. It's very, very smooth. Came nice and razor sharp. Uh, if you do want to buy this to flip it around, you know, if you actually enjoy the hobby of flipping, there is nothing wrong with that. I just don't want to because I don't want to scratch it up. To me, it's just a collectible. Although I have played with it a couple times, but I don't go crazy with it. Um... Attention to detail on this is very nice. All the milling is nice. There's no sharp ends. Everything is polished up. It's very slick and smooth. Uh, it feels very comfortable in the hand. And like I said, the extra weight, um, it really feels solid. Now, when you're flipping this, you have a lot of momentum. So for certain moves, um, like aerials, or if you're working on uh, you know, some different rotation type moves, it's, it outperforms pretty much every battle song I've ever had. However, all right, sorry about that. That's a stupid camera thing. 10 minutes it shuts off. Uh, anyway, I was just saying if you're doing like ricochets and stuff, um, it will beat up on your hands more. That extra weight will definitely fatigue you and you'll find yourself 
pretty raw. If you guys have ever flipped a heavy bell song, you'll find that your knuckles and stuff get pretty red and sore. Um, but it's a beautiful collector's piece, and it's a beautiful bell song to actually buy and carry and use if you can legally do so. But anyway, just want to review that. Uh, he has some excellent, excellent stuff on his website. He also happens to uh, uh, deal with pearl jewelry as well if you're interested in that. But I just want to mainly get the ballast on. That's what I'm interested in. But uh, he's actually a very nice gentleman. I talked to him uh, you know, through uh, messages and emails before. And I was very happy to acquire one of his knives here. Um, again, if you really look around and you know your, your custom ballast song stuff, you'll know that this is really a deal and a half at the price it's at right now. The ballast song scene in general has just exploded. Uh, there's a lot of uh, demand out there and very little supply. You see ballast songs going for ridiculous prices these days. Um, the Benchmade Model 42 should be cheaper than this, but it's not. $300 for a BM42 right now is about average. That's what just what they're getting. So if you have the opportunity of getting a 42 or this, I really would suggest this over it because uh, it does offer so much more. But, of course, everything's personal preference, and some people are going to think I'm nuts for even showing a knife this expensive, but some of the uh, the veterans of the uh, custom knife world uh, or community will definitely look at this and, and be appreciative of the video and say, you know what, I'm glad you told me, Jeff. I'm going to have to pick up one or two for myself uh, for the old collection. So, anyway, there's my review on the, uh, the Pandian uh, P1 from uh, Armand Policio. A link to his website is going to be in the description box. Check out his other stuff. Like I said, those mini bell songs, a lot more affordable, around the $100 to $150 range. I think a lot of you guys would really like those too. I wish I can review them, but I don't own one right now. Uh, I'm looking to get one maybe down the line in the future. If I do, of course, I will review them as well. But I would expect them to be the same quality as this, just in a smaller package. I think they're very, very cool. In fact, more people will probably watch this video and have a better chance of buying one of the small ones than actually forking over the money for this one. But either or, if you do end up picking one up, uh, I'm, I know for a fact you're going to love it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me give you a couple more views of this real quick before I go. It's just a, an outstanding ballast song. It's definitely, definitely worth the money. Like I said, if you're in the market for this type of knife. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.